Well, good morning, everyone. Sorry for the slight delay here. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm Rob Bonta, California Attorney General at the California Department of Justice. We, we work as a team and lucky for me and the people of California, I have the best team around. So I wanna start my remarks by thanking and acknowledging some of the folks who made today's announcement possible. And those are the following. Susan Saylor, Deputy Attorney General who recently retired from the Department of Justice, Joe Ragazzo, Deputy Attorney General, Michael Elisoffin, Supervising Deputy Attorney General, Nick Akers, Senior Assistant Attorney General, and Ellie Bloom, Special Assistant Attorney General. Thank you so much for your work on getting us to this point today. Let me also thank folks on the ground, our legal aid partners and others in the field, including the Western Center on Law and Poverty who helped sound the alarm and raise important issues to our attention and thank you for being our partner. I like to begin today's announcement with a memory. It's a memory of the first home I remember living in. It was a dusty trailer right outside of Bakersfield. It was often hot, it was often packed, especially when my entire family, my mom, my dad, and my siblings were inside. It wasn't fancy, but it was home. Unfortunately for too many Californians, their home has been ripped away from them while others live on the precipice of eviction. And let's just be clear who we're talking about here. We're talking about kids, talking about moms and dads, seniors on fixed incomes, and even folks working two or three jobs, all worried their family will be kicked out and potentially forced to live on the streets that they may be evicted into homelessness. This is unfortunately too many times and too many places our grim reality. And as we battle this housing crisis of epic proportion, our housing laws, especially our tenant protections, have never been more vital. This is part of the reason why just a few weeks ago, I launched our housing strike force and why the DOJ has been protecting tenants for years. But unfortunately, even amid this crisis, there are some who pursue profits over the interest of families and worse profits over the law. When you break the law, you will be held to account. There will be consequences. And today, I'm here to announce a $3.5 million judgment against a Los Angeles County-based real estate investment company, Wedgwood, for unlawfully evicting tenants from foreclosed properties. The terms of this judgment will serve as a model for this industry. To explain the settlement, I need to first explain Wedgwood's business model. A core tenant of the company's business model is profiting from foreclosed homes. In short, the company buys homes at foreclosure sales, fixes them up, and flips them back into the market for a profit. Wedgwood's business model relies upon the ability to move their properties off its books as quickly as possible, usually in days or in weeks. And we allege they use a variety of illegal and harassing tactics in pursuit of this business model and in pursuit of profit. These alleged unlawful tactics included depriving lawful tenants of their right to continue living on the property under a pre-existing lease or for at least 90 days after foreclosure as required by law. Evicting tenants without just cause in rent controlled jurisdictions filing false declarations to support the unlawful evictions and failing to provide essential utility services to tenants. Today's judgment will substantially reform these unlawful practices moving forward, and it will ensure that tenants of Wedgwood purchased properties are afforded full rights and protections under the law. The terms of this judgment are substantial, and they're extensive. Our judgment secures six key reforms to Wedgwood's practices and to their business model, including number one, Wedgwood will be required to make good faith efforts to determine occupants' tenancy status and whether the foreclosed property falls within the jurisdiction of a just cause ordinance, a law protecting tenants from eviction without cause. Wedgwood, uh, number two, must document all cash for keys negotiations where the occupant receives, occupants receive a cash payment to vacate a property and comply with state and local laws regulating these agreements, including those mandating a minimum compensation. 
Wedgwood must comply with all local, state, and federal laws governing the eviction process, including providing notice prior to eviction. Wedgwood will be required to train all relevant employees on the rights of tenants living in foreclosed properties. For five, Wedgwood will be required to provide regular reports to my office documenting its compliance with the injunctive uh, provisions of this judgment. And finally, number six, Wedgwood will pay $3.5 million. Of that, $2.75 million in restitution for unlawfully evicted tenants, $250,000 in civil penalties, and half a million dollars to support programs and related activities that benefit California tenants or help combat homelessness. Today's judgment, it's a big step forward. As a result of my department's work, we will be flipping Wedgwood's business model on its head, ensuring that tenants of its homes uh, are afforded full protection under the law. I'm committed to these kinds of efforts to advancing housing access, housing affordability, and housing equity in California. Efforts like today's action, along with my recent creation of the Housing Strike Force, the upcoming convening of a series of tenant roundtables, reflect this priority. In closing, I'd like to take this moment to remind and encourage all Californians to send complaints or tips related to housing to housing at doj.ca.gov. Visit our housing portal at oag.ca.gov slash housing. And if you are in need of legal aid related to housing, consider visiting lawhelpca.org for information. Addressing California's housing crisis is a top priority for me and for my office, for my team, and I and we will continue to devote staff and resources to all areas of this fight. If you are breaking our housing laws, I suggest you reconsider. Californians deserve better, and I promise you this is just the beginning. We will do everything in our power to hold those who violate our housing laws and all laws to account and bring them to justice. With that, I'd now like to introduce Madeline Howard, Senior Attorney at the Western Center on Law and Poverty for Brief Remarks. Madeline. Thank you so much, Attorney General Bonta, for this important litigation, and thank you to your team, many of whom I've worked with very closely. We really appreciate your work on this and for holding corporations accountable for protecting tenants' rights. So I'm a senior attorney with Western Center on Law and Poverty, and our organization works to help Californians with low incomes have access to safe, affordable homes, to health care, and to a strong safety net. And we do all of our work with racial justice at the center. During the foreclosure crisis, we saw tenants across the state losing their homes. And we worked with the Attorney General's office and with other partners, including National Housing Law Project and Tenants Together, to pass protections to ensure that tenants would not be summarily evicted if they lived in a foreclosed property. But even with good laws on the books, Enforcement actions like this one are critical to make these laws meaningful. Since most tenants facing eviction or unfair rent increases or harassment, they don't have an attorney to help them. And it's particularly important to enforce tenant protections when the property owner is a corporation. We hear a lot about mom and pop landlords in policymaking, but in reality, most tenants live in housing that's owned by corporate entities like these real estate investment trusts. And when corporate entities buy up properties, they often target communities of color. So there are really important race equity issues here as well. And during the foreclosure crisis, there was this huge shift in wealth from homeowners of color to corporate entities. And now fast forward a decade and we see continued gentrification and displacement all across the state, hitting communities of color the hardest. And this is all happening at a time when COVID is exacerbating the existing housing crisis. And there's so much public attention on homelessness, but we don't hear as much about tenants' rights. And that's really unfortunate because there's such a direct connection between tenants' rights and homelessness. When a family is evicted, whether it's by a court process or they're just afraid because a landlord is harassing them, they're often going to end up homeless. And so they're going to join the people who are already living on the streets in our state. So to address the homelessness crisis, we really need to look upstream and protect people from losing their homes in the first place. That's where enforcement actions like this one really come in to be really important. And we have to protect tenants before they lose their homes. So we thank you so much for your leadership on this issue, Attorney General Bonta, and we really look forward to working with you to keep California's housed healthy and well. Thank you.